Hi, quick disclaimer here. I'm looking to produce some a somewhat a procedural um, hair shading highlights for hairs, specifically for stylized hair. So we can see that Suzanne here it's receiving this material and what it is is a geometry that is picking up or reading their normal position and it's going to feed it to a vector transform specifically from the object to the camera and why do we need that direction that means that wherever I am positioning my camera towards the object it is going to be representing a single direction and that is going to be subtracted by a, a specific number which basically will control the hair rim offset for example if I do this I don't know if you can see it it's varying because right now I'm doing the hair specular let me do it on this one rather so you can see that this material this this hair strands have this material linked so you may probably feel curious about this material sh shader so I'm doing this quick video so that you can check it out and of course if you have been following all of my previous series you know that I will always rename my nodes so in this case this will control the hair rim how's that because we're going to create a dot product between the result of all of this and the normal by itself so we're basically taking the origin and then offsetting that same origin looking towards the camera and finally we're going to add the incoming ray from the camera back again okay so this combines the camera offset with the hair now that we have that information we're going to let's see how it looks it looks like this it looks ugly <laughs> so we need to map that to a coordinate and in this case we're going to take the Z uh, location of the object and we're also going to add uh, an extra value here and then we're finally going to project a sphere so basically what we're doing here in this in this setup right here I don't know if you can see it probably there it's that I'm picking up the objects normals projecting it to the camera creating a dot product which is a uh, cross combination or multiplication of the vector by these two values that I have here the camera and the normal after the result of the coordinate for this ring and we're using it specifically for the Z that how do I know it's Z because you can see right here it's Z it's pointing up so that's what I want I don't want it to go left or right it says right here that Z is up blue so that's what I'm taking that's the coordinate that I'm taking and finally I'm adding an extra offset for that so that I don't have to go back all the way over here if I created my original rim then I can just take this value and add it up or uh, lower it so that the hair highlight will 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 slide as you can see there and where it it's going to happen it's going to be using this gradient sphere the, this quadratic sphere because my interest is that you can see it all around the object but as you notice uh, there is only a certain part of the object that is doing this and we also have this I'm getting this result because I decided to take the texture coordinates from the UVs which I should not but I should rather go to generate and from there on I can really see the 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 effect that I was going after and that is that the specific hair the rim light hair the specular hair um, highlight will be controlled now by this gradient look at that when you continue to move this um, with this combination in this case subtraction I'm subtracting the original result of everything minus the generated coordinate and I use this color ramp to make it thick or thin so yeah this this guy this monkey this is sand monkey looks like Captain Levi from Attack on Titan <laughs> I don't know why but it it just so happens to look like that anyways um, let's um,
displays let's move let let's slide it let me call this the offset slider all right there we go offset slider operation which basically like i mentioned before just adds the value to the set and so if set is down here and then i add it with a math node it's going to add all the way up here and if you want to do um, other things you can come here and you know manipulate that because this controls the hair rim it's pretty self-explanatory so yes this is experiment this is an experiment this is how i um usually experiment and, and deal with these things and uh, maybe if you, if you want to see the direct result maybe we should do this just like that so what's next um i will try to introduce noise specifically some areas that will mask that noise and that's it but here you go this is the basic tree you can check it out right there uh, here we go vector object to camera do this offset make a dot product combine it with the, the hair incoming ray from the camera put that into the Z location or the Z coordinate and then do a math operation to, to slide it or to offset it. Finally project that into a gradient and that gradient can go straight out to, to the sphere. Whenever you have this kind of combination you always you can always select everything here and then shift P and then do a basic rim light. Yeah I missed spaces anyways and why do I want to show you this and there's a previous uh, this was not rehearsed <laughs> why do I want to show you this because I've noticed that doing nodes it's exactly like learning languages when you learn languages you need to first know the structure of the grammar so in grammar you always have the subject I'm sorry but I'm, I'm writing on my tablet oh, I'm sorry with a mouse you have the subject probably it, it will not be like this for most of the cultures but generally if you want to learn a new languages if you want to learn new languages you will start with the subject you will use a verb and then finally you'll have what is called the predicate or in our case there we go predicate so you have the subject the verb and the predicate and why do I want to show you this because I've taught a lot of subjects in the past grammar math history art you name it and there is a formula for everything and I find out that newcomers into nodes new users new blender users for shading here in in the node 3 are sometimes lost because they don't know this structure they don't know where the subject needs to go they don't know where to put a verb they don't know how to um, conjugate the, the, the correct tense to speak in present future or past as in with the predicate and the verb so I figured you know what from now on I should I should explain everything to you into this context so that you will not fear coming into the notes and creating your first sentences of course we all know that sentences get, can get a lot longer with a lot more things but you you really start here with your subject your verb and your predicate and you already know what this means right the subject is the, the person who we are talking into or we are talking about in the sentence the the verb it's an action you already know that it's an action that can be in present time past time future time and the predicate it's anything that will complement these two things or basically that will make sense out of the verb okay that was grammar 101 in here what we have it's a mix of all of these things so I'm going to be using the same colors who is the subject the subject as you would 
expect and I th and I think this is the the comparison here this this will really help you see things clearly first of all when you were first learning how to write your language you were always taught by a teacher and that teacher will feed you will give you the first the very first sentences that you would write even though they were very basic, you would acquire that knowledge, you would acquire that method of thinking from that teacher, right? In here, for Blender to know who are you talking about in this sentence, rather this scene, you're going to have to pick up the subject. Who is the subject? I'm going to be selecting this. Here we go. So our subject is this guy. Oops, sorry. It's this guy and this guy yeah I know mr. Schiller this this is crazy this is this is as outrageous that means that if I know how to make a sentence in my own language I can start speaking notes indeed sir kind sir and gal thank you for your participation every time you comment down in the comment section below it really helps the channel and the community so anyways let's go for the verb who is the verb? I think you probably figured out by now that the verb means the action. That is for everything that we understand that it's going to happen and you already see it right here. It's going to happen in coordinates. Okay, so let's pick up the verb thing and everything that you're going to write for coordinates to be understood in vector. Let's call it like that. Vector. Vector. All right, that's your verb. And finally, what is going to be happening to the object itself later on in the game, or later on in the final result, is going to be the predicate, which is basically right around here. Let me see this, if I can, right here. Why? Because we have color correction, we have color transformations, we have, what else do we have? We have um, attributes. Uh, Yes, no, that, that would be a subject. Uh, there's something else. Let me just switch add, color vector, converter. Oh, shaders. That's the one that I was missing. Shaders. Oh, the converters. This. Mix RGB. Let me, let, let, let me just mix RGB and stuff. So, color, mixes, and shaders. That's your predicate. Okay? So I know this might be a, a, a very per peculiar video. If you were to add noise to this thing, to which part of the sentence would you go? Would you go to the predicate? Would you go to the verb? Or would you do it on the subject? Mr. Schiller, this is mind-blowing. It's been 15 minutes and my head already hurts. Well, that's what I'm here for. To pick up your curiosity so let me know in the comment section below where will you put this noise thank you very much